Welcome to the Turkey Hunter Podcast with me, your host, Andy Galliano. In this podcast, I share with turkey hunters just like you how to have more turkeys on your hunting property and how to have more successful turkey hunts. I teach you how to do this with tips and interviews with turkey hunting pros, wildlife management tips, and entertaining turkey hunting stories. Tune in weekly as I share proven and simple strategies to help you have more success this turkey season. Make sure to head over to www.iamturkeyhunting.com to subscribe to receive free turkey hunting tips, tactics, strategies, and product reviews. Also, please visit and like my Facebook fan page. Go to Facebook and search I Am Turkey Hunting. And also feel free to post your turkey hunting photos from this past season and let us know where and when you killed your bird. For all of you Twitter users out there, please follow me on Twitter where my handle is at turkeyhitman and I will be sure to follow you back. And now, for this week's show. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Turkey Hunter Podcast. You are listening to episode number 132, Late Season Turkey Hunting Tips. And I am your host and the guy who doesn't know what to do with the extra hour and a half of sleep that he's getting, and the guy who is just torn, torn like an old sweater, with mixed emotions about the ending of Alabama's spring turkey hunting season. Physically, my body is saying it's glad turkey season is over. (laughs) Mentally, I'm never, never ready for it to be over even though I had a rough season this year at home. But I keep telling myself mentally that we are only 315 days, 11 hours, 10 minutes, and 34 seconds away from opening day of spring turkey season in Alabama. So I am back from North Carolina. Cameron and I had a great time. We got wet in the rain. We heard turkeys gobble. We saw turkeys. We saw some beautiful countryside. We logged about 43,500 steps in two and a half days of hunting. There was a shot fired, and I'll let Cameron tell us about that next week. And we have planned our return trip for next year already. All in all, I give the trip two thumbs up. Good times. Okay, so before I get into today's topic of some late season turkey hunting tips for you guys, I want to talk a little turkey hunting news with you. The news reports have been rolling in of hunting accidents. Just what we don't want to hear. Just this past week, a hunter in Ohio was shot in the back by another hunter who was hunting over decoys. So according to NBC4i.com, a Morgan County, Ohio man hunting turkeys in the Wayne National Forest was injured in an accidental shooting Friday morning. According to the Morgan County Sheriff's Office, the victim said he had turkey decoys set up and was calling turkeys when he was shot from behind. Deputies said he had multiple shotgun pellet wounds to his backside. All of the wounds appeared to be superficial, investigators said. The victim and the other hunter involved made their way to the roadway to await help. The victim was taken to a Zanesville area hospital for treatment. So there's one instance where somebody was hurt while hunting over decoys on public land. And here's another story coming from Marshall Township in Pennsylvania. According to WTAE.com, A man was shot in the abdomen in what police said was a turkey hunting accident Monday morning in Marshall Township, Allegheny County. Investigators said two men were hunting turkeys on Mingo Road at about 6 a.m. when one of them was shot. The victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Northern Regional Police spent hours investigating at the scene. Officers were seen bringing evidence out of the woods, including a tree stand and a decoy. A van in the driveway was put on a flatbed and towed away. While police said the shooting is believed to be an accident, they also said it remained under investigation. Pennsylvania's spring turkey season started on Saturday. Here is one more story of an accident coming from New York. 
According to buffalonews.com, a 17-year-old was treated and released from the hospital after he was shot Monday morning while turkey hunting, state police said. The incident, which police are calling an accident, happened at about 6.30 a.m. The teen was hunting on private property at the same time as a second hunting party. The teen was shot in the torso by part of a round fired by another hunter, police said. He was taken to a local hospital. Police said the shooter has been identified, but they did not release his name. The investigation is continuing. One more story of a shooting. Now, this is the first story that I have seen where someone has actually been shot either reaping or fanning. So this comes from foxnews.com, and it says, A hunter who believed he had taken down a pair of turkeys set out to find the birds, only to discover his brother and friend wounded on the ground. Kenneth Dentst, who was out hunting with the victims on opening day of turkey season in Kansas, accidentally shot the pair after mistaking their disguises for real birds. Right after he shot, he thought he saw a turkey flopping on the ground. But when he hurried up there, he saw two guys rolling on the ground. Jim Busson, a Kansas Department of Wildlife, Parks, and Tourism game warden, told the Wichita Eagle. He had shot both hunters in the face. The shooter swore he'd seen strutting toms and some other turkeys right up until then. The victims, identified as Gary Dentst and Justin Wiles, had been hiding behind preserved turkey tail fans, meant to act as a decoy to attract other birds. Besson told the news outlet that while the hunters were initially spread across two properties, the two victims returned to where Dentst was hunting without notifying him. Besson inferred that the tragic accident could have been prevented, calling the pair's failure to communicate with Dentst one of the cardinal sins we teach against in Hunter's Ed. And that is so true. They were calling to each other and sneaking up on each other like two toms coming at it, at each other, Bisson told the Wichita Eagle. Both swore they were sneaking on real turkeys. Crawford County Sheriff Dan Peake told Parsonson.com that the victims were able to walk to a nearby truck and are expected to recover from their injuries. An investigation is ongoing. So there were actually a couple of cardinal sins broken there that should not have been. And that is hunting in an area you're not supposed to be hunting in and where no one else expects you to be. And not identifying your target well enough. And I know what a lot of you guys are going to say out there. They should not have been fanning or reaping. And I can't necessarily disagree with that statement. If you're going to take a fan or a wild turkey decoy and stick it in front of your face and crawl through the grass to try to lure in a turkey, you are taking a chance. And I think that all three of those hunters knew that they were taking a chance when they were doing that. So if you're going to reap, you're going to fan, please, please, please be careful. Okay, so the next story here is one that's a little bit more tragic. And unfortunately, it's also one that could have totally been prevented. So KOTATV.com reports, A missing hunter killed in an accidental shooting is identified as 63-year-old Timothy Coates of Rapid City. Coates was found dead from an apparent accidental shooting Sunday on Forest Service land. The family reported Coates did not return from turkey hunting Saturday. He was hunting alone. Investigators say it appears he accidentally shot himself while crossing a barbed wire fence. Man, what a shame. I mean, to think that this guy will never again go home to his family because he did not take... 30 seconds to unload his gun, lay the gun down on the ground underneath the bottom strand of barbed wire fence, and then cross the fence, and then bend down and pick his gun up, and then load his gun, reload his gun. I just, I mean, I don't know what to say. Please take the extra time to remember your firearm safety rules. 
and use them whether it's turkey season or it's deer season or it's pheasant hunting or quail hunting or rabbit hunting, whatever it happens to be, it is only a few seconds of time to unload a gun when you're crossing a creek, to unload your gun when you're crossing a fence, to lay that gun down on the ground. Of course, with the muzzle pointed away from where you're going, it only takes a few seconds. And because this man didn't take a few seconds, his family's never going to get to see him again. Uh, okay, man, I, I just, all right, I'm not going to dwell on it anymore. All right, so on a positive note, there are a few states that have seasons that have just opened. Maine, New York, Utah, Vermont, and New Hampshire. All of their seasons have just opened. So, if you are like me and your season has recently ended, don't forget that there's a lot of other states that still have open seasons. And some of those states are only a short drive away from us. Spend a little bit of money on an out-of-state license. Spend a little bit of time doing some research. Go find some public land to hunt on and get back out there in the woods. Whether you have the desire to kill a Grand Slam or a Super Slam doesn't matter. This is an opportunity to see some different trees, to see a different landscape, and to see what turkey hunting in other states is like. And that is something that Cameron and I are going to address in next week's show as well. Okay, let's get into the meat of the show. So I want to talk about a few late season tips for you guys who are still chasing birds. Many of you guys further north are currently dealing with birds that are hinned up, and most of these tactics are not for you yet. But you guys in Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, who still have seasons that are ongoing, where the hens are close to, if not already, sitting on nests full-time, and your gobblers are lonely. Oftentimes, for the first time in two to two and a half months, this time of year can be pretty tough. So, much of whether we will have success on a given day this time of year is just a matter of catching the right bird on the right day. But really, though, isn't that turkey hunting anyway? Late season, we can often go days at a time without hearing a turkey gobble. And then the next day is magic. Two or three birds together gobbling their brains out and trying to outrun each other to come to your calling. Man, that gets my blood pumped up just thinking about it. And that scenario right there leads me to my first late season tip. Number one, late season turkey hunting requires persistence and determination. Stay after those birds and don't ride off mid to late morning hunts and afternoon hunts for those of you guys who can do that legally. Be sure to cover a lot of ground to find those toms who are looking for love. Male turkeys in late season often seem to be pretty disinterested. We have to search to find turkeys who are interested. Number two, Late spring hunts can be quick. So, in saying that, be cautious when you're trying to close the gap between you and a gobbling late season wild turkey. A lonely, desperate gobbler will often cover much more ground to get to your calling in late season than he will in early season. And maybe that's because there just aren't as many hens to intercept him and thwart our attempts to woo that tom. So, I can't tell you the number of birds that I have bumped late season because I was trying to get in that bird's living room. And I'm talking about birds that are already on the ground gobbling. So, if you get one to respond one time, don't start in that direction just yet. Work on getting that second gobble from him. See if that turkey's closing the distance already. And if he is, find your spot to sit down. In fact, you should have already found that spot before you ever called the first time to get that turkey to gobble. Get in your spot, sit down, get ready to go. All right, next up, tip number three. We can sometimes, in late season, call gobblers away from hens because the hens aren't as interested in breeding 
when they have a nest full of eggs that might be 50 to 75 yards away from where they're feeding or watering. So some of you may remember, I actually had that happen last year. I was hunting with my buddy Todd. We saw two gobblers walk into, I can't even really call it a fire lane. It's really an area that's planted pines. And when the loggers came in to that, to that area of planted pines to do their first thinning, and they thinned every third row of pines, the landowner of that property actually went through that row of pines that had been taken out, and they maintain it every single year. They bush hog it, and so it's grown up in grass, native grasses. And Todd and I saw these two gobblers walk out into this lane of planted grass, and we began to call to them. They started our direction, and then two hens walked out of the woods into the same lane of grass. And the gobblers turned and went to the hens. After about an hour of calling, and I mean we were laying it on them, to the point to where I was almost embarrassed that we were calling that much, the turkeys, the gobblers, finally realized that the two hens, they were not going to play ball with them. But there was a very talkative and very suggestive and sometimes a nasty hen on the edge of the woods that was trying to seduce them, trying to woo them, and they left the two hens and they came to us. And I probably need to finish that story by saying that Todd killed one of those birds, and we had a good chance at a double, but I want to remind everyone that when you go hunting, it's a good idea to take a gun. Todd did not bring his gun that day, so Todd was using my gun, and he killed that turkey with my gun, And when he shot, the other turkey decided it was not a good idea to stick around. So, if you happen to see a tom out in a field with hens and it's late season, or a hen and it's late season, don't think that you're going to have a hard time getting that bird away from his hen because he may very well break away and come to your calling. It is, I'm going to say, much more likely to happen late season than it is early season when they've got 10 or 12 hens with them. All right, next tip for you guys is that gobblers will often cruise from field to field looking for hens that are feeding near their nesting areas. Sometimes a gobbler will loaf in a shaded area on the edge of a field or a power line right of way or a gas line right of way, and he'll stay in the shade and he'll wait and watch for a hen to wander out of the woods and into that right away or that field. So really kind of twofold here. Be careful about just walking right out into a field or an opening without using a locator call to induce a shot gobble or even some hen calling to get a response. If you get that response from that gobbler, Again, you want to be ready to act quickly. You need to be sitting your rear end down pretty quickly from that point. Okay, so there are four late season turkey hunting tips for you guys. And that is the end of the free portion of today's show. If you want to become a premium subscriber and hear four more late season turkey hunting tips, then what you need to do is send a text message to the number 44222, and you want to text the word turkey hunter. I know that's two words. Make those two words one word, turkey hunter with no spaces. Text that to the number 44222 and follow directions from there. I'm going to text you back after you text me. And I'm going to ask you to respond with your email address only. So respond back with your email address only. And then I'm going to email you a link to my website where you can create a username and a password and pay the $12 for the annual subscription to the premium content of the Turkey Hunter podcast. And then once you do that, you will want to download the Podbean app from either iTunes or Google Play onto your mobile device. 
and then enter your username and password that you just created when you paid for your subscription and you should have access at that point to all of the premium content from past episodes and all the premium content to come 52 weeks from the day that you sign up. If you have any questions or you have any problems with signing up for the premium content, email me andy at iamturkeyhunting.com. Okay, so okay, so that's all that I've got for you guys today. But before I cut you loose, I do have one favor to ask of you. If you would, please, if you haven't done so already, if you learned something from today's episode, if you will go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or Google Play Music, whatever podcast player you use to listen to this show, if you will go on there and leave a five-star rating and a review of this show, I would be very, very appreciative of that. It'll take you maybe a minute to do. And it's a great way to get back to the show. Okay, that's it. That's all that I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I know that you have choices. I appreciate you spending your time with us. I hope you have a wonderful week. Be safe out there hunting. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Goodbye. Thanks for tuning in. You were just listening to the Turkey Hunter podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please go on over to iTunes and leave a five-star review. And make sure to head over to www.iamturkeyhunting.com to subscribe for free turkey hunting tips, tactics, strategies, and product reviews to help you have a more successful turkey season. And stay tuned for upcoming episodes on hunting afternoon birds, how to film your hunt, and the breeding cycle of hens, as well as some guest interviews. Thanks again for listening. We know your time is valuable, and we appreciate you sharing some of it with us. See you next week.